In today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of time traveling. A while ago, I started a fermentation that I intended to go for about a year. That was three and a half years ago. So today, I think it's time for us to make some hot sauce with that fermentation. So much has happened since I started this video. It feels like an absolute lifetime ago. But anyway, let's head back to October 2018. It was arguably a simpler time and uh, let's see how we started off this fermentation. Today we're going to be kicking off two fermentations that I'm going to leave for at least a year. So I'm just interested to see how much of a difference it really makes. Over here we have our KN and our Ring of Fire. On the right here we have my lovely Peri Peris. I had some that I'd frozen from 2017 and it's about it's about a third of the amount in total. These are all fresh that I picked just a couple hours ago, really. Both of these are going to be a mash. I'm going to be putting them into these jars here. No real reason why I'm using these, except uh, I had a couple wide mouth lids. So these are wide mouth uh, Kilner jars. And I had some of these lids, so I made them into some fermentation lids. And I am hoping that I can fill these up pretty full so that we reduce the risk of having any sort of bad bacteria going on inside there. I always recommend gloves. You know, even if you think you can handle the heat, it doesn't matter. There's still very sensitive parts of your body that if you touch, you won't be a very happy person. It's always a bit weird doing videos like this, even my shorter fermentations. I don't know what happens between the time that I've made the sauce and when I've come back to it after the fermentation. So doing one where I'm waiting a year and I know I'm going to be waiting a year before I finish the video, it's quite weird because who knows what's going to happen between now and when I eventually finish this video. Hopefully my channel's still going, hopefully you guys are still watching. I feel so naive watching this back. I had no idea how much would actually change since October 2018. When I made this video, I had 6,000 subscribers and now I have 161,000 of you watching my videos. Thank you guys so, so much. I've also started a successful hot sauce business. I've started selling seeds. I created an application called Seedsio. And most importantly, we've moved to our dream homestead. We have half a kilogram of peppers there and we need to work out how much salt we need. Now, typically I go with a two to 3% brine. In this one, I think I'm gonna go a little bit higher between about three and 5%. So we'll land on about 4% brine. And what that means is for half a kilogram, 4% is 20 grams of salt. Careful here. Now before I do this, I'm gonna give it a bit of a spray with some star sand, just a so no rinse sanitizer. We'll make sure this is as clean as possible. With a long ferment, you have to, I think, be a little bit more careful with how you're, you're treating everything. Make sure everything is as clean as you can get it. I'm spraying the edge as well where the cap is going to be. Um, spray the, the cap too. So I need to clean this up a little bit. The gap is good. I'm happy with that. We're going to be making sure that the airlock doesn't 
hit the surface here because then we'll have some problems. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on it. Sometimes what happens is it bubbles up from underneath and it'll actually push all this a bit higher. So let's just give this a good clean on the edges just so I can put the lid on. That's looking good to me. Take a bit of a closer look there. Really are some bubbles in there, but that'll settle out. You've got to keep an eye on this for the first few days because I have filled this quite high up, which I want, but at the same time, I'm a little bit cautious because I don't want it, the bubbles to push the source up and inside the um, airlock. So you need to keep an eye on it. If it does get inside the airlock, then all you need to do is just clean up the mess because there will be some mess and replace the airlock or clean the airlock and put it back in. Here we go, this is the airlock we're going to use. I'm just going to give it a quick rinse again with the star sand here. And we can put that in not too deep. Don't forget to add some liquid to the, the airlock so the airlock can do its job. So I'm going to put that to one side for now while we do the next source. Interesting. And some salt water or brine. I wanted to point something out just before I finish up here and stick this inside the ferminator. Um, this will be fermenting for the next few weeks at least with the bubbler in. I might end up taking the bubbler out and actually put a sealing cap on the top. I just need to see how that goes. I will comment on that at the end of the process. So that's it. We'll see you again in a year's time. Like 2018, Sean just said, I did replace the lids of the fermentations. I did this at about three and a half, four months in, because at that stage, the fermentation is done. It's no longer creating CO2 or lactic acid. So you don't need that airlock anymore. And there's no point in having to maintain that airlock. So I replaced them with solid lids. This here is the Peri Peri. This here is the KN and Ring of Fire. Both looking fantastic, by the way. So I replaced it with a solid lid. You can see I'm using a plastic bag here that just helps create a seal because these lids don't have a rubber ring inside there and a bit of plastic there will help keep it nice and sealed. And it's definitely worked because there's no growth on top of there after more than three years. So let's have a look at the fermentation. First things first, I'm gonna try it without mixing it with anything else and then we'll actually make a sauce with it. We're gonna be starting off with the KN and Ring of Fire. I'm guessing this won't be as hot as the peri peri. So, definitely no mold there. It smells amazing. The texture here is just chunky and thick. It's not very smooth. It will be smooth once you process it into sauce, but Smells amazing. I'm not going to take a heck of a lot because this is not really diluted and I just want to get a good taste of it. Wow. 
wow. Wow. I didn't expect it <clears throat> to develop those flavors as much as it has. Uh, see, the thing is, fermenting in a glass jar, it's inert. There's nothing here that can impart flavor into this. But the fact that this has gone for so long, it's mellowed out, all the flavors have come together, it tastes incredible. Mm, really good. I think the heat has diminished a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how it is with the peri peri, but it definitely feels like the heat has diminished just a just a bit on this one. Let's try the peri peri. It's making me sniff. It's got some heat. Don't, don't get me wrong. Ah. And again, it just looks perfect. There's no growth on top. Awesome. I'm gonna use a new spoon. <laughs> now, I'm sure if you have been watching my channel for any length of time, you'll know that Peri Peri is definitely one of my favorite chilies. Let's give this a go. I think this is going to be hotter than the other one, but still, that's a decent amount. Again, amazing flavors. Um, The heat comes on a little bit slower. Okay, <laughs> there's the heat. I'd say that's easily twice, at least twice the heat of the KN mixed with the Ring of Fire. It's building, building. It's quite interesting. The the heat normally on a peri peri it can hit your lips quite a bit. Uh, this isn't really getting my lips, so I was a little bit on the lips, but flavor is again it's so different it's really transformed it and i like it i really do it'll be interesting to see what we do here with the mix let's make a sauce and see how it comes out now i'm keeping this simple i'm going to be using this beautiful mash that i've created uh we've got the two there i'm going to be mixing it one part mash one part white wine vinegar and we're going to blend that up and that's it. I'm not going to filter it out or anything like that. This is for my own purposes. Well, there's, there's one bottle going to someone a little special, but uh, the rest is going to be sitting in my fridge for when people come over. I started with 50% vinegar here because I am making a vinegar based hot sauce. I don't want it to be too vinegary. You know, Tabasco, they use about 75, 80% vinegar in their sauce. I don't want to go that high. You know, I want a lot of the flavors to come through and 50% allows that to happen. If you don't want a vinegar based hot sauce, obviously there's other alternatives. I look at my channel. I've got plenty of other recipes that don't use vinegar, but I do like a vinegar based hot sauce now and then. And I think these two fermentations, they, kind of lend themselves well to a vinegar based hot sauce but 50 percent means that it dilutes the heat a little bit it adds a little bit of flavor with that lovely white wine vinegar and uh, it allows people like my wife to be able to have my hot sauce without it burning her mouth too much so let's try it now with the 50 percent i think it's going to be ideal i have done similar type sauces in the past Perfect, perfect. The white wine vinegar brings a lot of sweetness to it. Um, <coughs> is that heat? <coughs> it's still got a good amount of heat. It hasn't diluted it that much, making my mouth water with all that vinegar. Uh, but it does taste amazing. You know, if you are using a distilled white vinegar, which is a bit of a harsher vinegar, then start off with maybe 25, 30% vinegar to the amount of hot sauce you have. But with a more mellow vinegar, like a white wine vinegar or red wine vinegar, even or apple cider vinegar, you can go a bit higher because it just adds to the sauce. 
That's amazing. I'm going to bottle up the sauce and then we'll move on to doing the peri peri sauce. Oh, that looks amazing. I love the texture. And I'm going to fill up too much. Uh, I hate it when that happens. Make sure all your bottles, if you are bottling up, uh, make sure they are all properly sterilized and sanitized. I've already done all these. And uh, that just make sure that you have a good shelf life on your sauce. The peri peri is a little bit darker and a little bit chunkier than the other one. And man, it smells just so good. So we're gonna throw that in, same as we did before if we can get it out of there. There we go. And then rinse it out with the vinegar. some fumes smells and looks amazing though uh, one of these bottles are going to be going to my brother it's his birthday soon so Steve I'll be bringing that to you next weekend uh, gonna make him a, a big bottle I think well before we bottle it up might as well give it a taste did have a clean spoon My brother's gonna love that. Oh, that is good. The sweetness of the peri peri and the smokiness of the peri peri coming through with that sweetness of the vinegar and <clears throat> it all just offsets itself so well. I was considering putting some, uh, I was considering putting some garlic in here, which would be a good addition, but I don't really think it's necessary. It just tastes so good as it is. Definitely is a little bit thicker than <coughs> the other sauce and hotter. <clears throat> I'll try Andre on it as well, my brother in law. Uh, he's coming around tomorrow, so we'll get him to try it out. But uh, I think it might be a bit, bit too much heat for him. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be selling any of this batch. This was just a very long-term test batch. I have hundreds on the go all the time, uh, testing out new recipes and things like that. But I think this was a success and I will definitely be stocking some long-term fermentations in my store in the near future. I actually have a big batch that's been going for a while now and I'm hoping to have that in the store within the next six months. But in the meantime, I have got stock of the Blazing Buffalo Extreme, I've got the Sting, and I've also got the Pain in the Butt at the moment, and there's some other things going on in the store too. And there'll be more stuff coming very, very soon. So go check out the store if you do want to try out one of my sauces, I'm sure you will absolutely love it. It's been interesting going back in time, watching that video from 2018, and just remembering <laughs> my aspirations, what I was trying to do with my channel, uh, my vision for where I wanted to be in terms of a new home with bigger property and it's nice to see that I was able to achieve my dreams and I have many more and I hope that 
my channel continues to grow. I hope that you guys continue enjoying my videos. There's going to be so many more awesome videos coming to my channel over the next few years, you know, especially with the new property, growing a lot more chilies. I have a lot more time to make my experimental batches and share recipes with you guys. So keep tuned in. Thank you for your patience. I know that there's been a lack of source videos over the last six months to a year. And, you know, that's to be expected with what's been going on in our, our personal kind of life. But thank you for sticking around. And I promise you, you will love where the channel is going. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, stay spicy.